Hello. I have, sorry. One second. Clear my throat, sorry. I have one of two hauls to show you. We're gonna split this up and we're gonna show everything I've gotten like from Amazon and that I found like while I'm out and about thrifting because that's basically what I do now that I am temporarily on a employment hiatus. So let's see, what do we got here? Several things, most of this comes from Savers and Goodwill because I don't know, I've been having so much luck at my local um, savers that, you know, it's just been great. Sorry, I need to just disappear for half a second. Okay, so we'll start with media. Um, that seat. We got, so from, I found this at Goodwill. It was $1.99 in the horror section. It's very rare that I see these type of Christopher Pike novels, but uh, a novel of horror, The Season of Passage, Christopher Pike, New York's Time bestseller. I love my horror novels. I've been reading a lot more lately. And this one on the back, it reads, Dr. Lauren Wagner was a celebrity. She was involved with the most exciting adventure mankind had ever undertaken. The whole world admired and respected her, but Lauren knew fear. Inside voices entreating in trin, in her to love them outside the mystery of the missing group that had gone before her, the dead group. But were they simply dead or something else? A terrifying novel of horror and surprisingly of salvation from one of America's best-selling writers, a novel you won't forget, The Season of Passage. So this is what it is, $1.99 in the horror section. You know, horror novels, love them. We got, oh, we'll do this one next. And today while I was at Barnes and Noble looking around, I saw that they had this in the paperback and I'm like, oh, I've always wanted that novel, but I didn't feel like paying the $15.99 price point for it. So I found this on hardback. I don't know, I was just putting it out in the universe and you know, the thrifting gods answered, but I finally got my hands on the novelization of this because the movie is based off of this book and it is a classic and it is William Peter Blatley's The Exorcist. This is a 1971 edition. I mean you can tell it's pretty old just by like even look at those like cool like on you know even pages. It's just really cool. I am so excited to have this. Finally got a book edition of The Exorcist. I'm totally stoked. Um, <laughs> of course, you all know what, what it's about, but you know, let's see. it's the book club addiction. Yeah, there it is. You can tell what the publishing date, copyright, mm, 1971. So I was, I'm pretty excited. Like, ooh, ooh, sorry, I'm just so excited. You take off the jacket and look, isn't that so cool? I mean, it's totally plain, but I mean, just the spine alone is awesome. We'll put it back on the jacket. Okay. And then now we're gonna finish with like the media I found. Um, so this is out of print and I haven't seen it since I was little, but we have a copy of The Air Up There with Kevin Bacon. Let me know if you've seen this movie, if you even remember it, am I the only one that's crazy? Um, but the up there. I think you can only get it on VHS, but yeah. I was gonna read the back. Yeah. We got, this was recommended to me by my friend Joe. We got Murder at 1600 with Leslie Snipes and Diane Lane. I like her as an actress. She's really good. Diane Lane. Good. We got copy of Bringing Out the Dead with Nicolas Cage. We got, I didn't own this in another Nick Cage movie, so I thought I'd um, add it to my collection. We have It Could Happen to You with Bridget Fonda. Um, I've been wanting this for forever and I didn't want to pay the $15 price point for it, so I finally found it at Goodwill. Um, Thor Dark World $2.99 Blu-ray. Um, 
for $2.99. Everybody was always talking about this on the recent movie battle. Juice, I just bought the DVD because I'd be happy with it. Not necessarily my type of movie, but I'm willing to give it a shot and we'll see. We have, oh, I love Marilyn Monroe is one of my favorite like classic actresses, her and Audrey Hepburn. And I did not own this movie and I was so happy I finally found a copy of The Misfits with Marilyn Monroe and Clark Gable and Montgomery Clift. One of her last movies she did before she died. And we got some savers. This one is called Degree of Guilt. It looks like a made for TV movie, but these, I like these types of movies that are like thriller suspense type things and oh uh, it looked interesting so I got this degree of guilt I had never ever heard of this and it's Wes Craven presents don't look down never I was like as soon as I saw this I'm like I've never heard of this I needed it for my horror collection um one fateful day as Carla's boyfriend snapped photos Carla's sister fell through a loose railing and plummeted over a cliff to a tragic death Ever since, Carla has been haunted by visions of her angry sister blaming her. As a result, Carla has developed an unnatural and paralyzing fear of heights. To overcome her acrophobia, she joins a support group, but when the support group members start getting killed one by one, Carla begins to suspect that her sister's accident was no accident, and she has been the real target all along. Who is in this movie? Let's see. Uh... Megan Ward, Billy Burke, and Terry Keeney. That's all it says. Uh, Billy Burke is the only one I recognize because he plays Bella's dad in Twilight. <laughs> but yeah, I saw this $2.99. Uh, it's probably one of Wes Craven's like more non-horror movies, but more of a thriller. But I saw it and I'm like, never heard of it. Need it. Add it to my, because Wes Craven's one of my favorites. So I had to add that. A Stephen King movie I didn't have, and that is Stephen King's Thinner. Um, I didn't have this. Um, Sigourney Weaver and Holly Hunter in Copycat. Copycat, sorry. My big old finger is covering. Um, this one, a West Craven production, The Breed, and it's a DVD, but what's cool is it is a DVD steelbook, which are kind of rare. But, you know, saver's fine. Um, I needed a new copy of this movie. Um, Fear.com. I don't remember it being the greatest, but I just remember it being a fun, like, horror movie. Um, I find these like I find, um, like I get nails in my tire. I get nails in my tire all the time. But, a lenticular ghost ship. I actually bought this for my sister. It was 50 cents at one of these thrift stores I go to. Ugh, it's just a big old amount of dirt. I need to wash this sucker before I give it to her. But go ship lenticular DVD for her. Um, And this one is probably like one of the few Christmas movies that I have. But it's a Divas Christmas Carol, 50 cents with Vanessa Williams. And what's cool is that it has the bass player from Grand Duran as one of the ghosts in the movie. So I thought that was rad put that there and now we got okay we'll finish this the VHS um we have this on VHS it's to replace one I already have because I have this on VHS but this has different artwork and I like this artwork better um for my VHS but stigmata and I thought this was pretty rad as well a two-pack collector series of the anime Amityville horror you get Amityville 1 and 2 so it comes in this cool like a little box set, Amityville. At one point, as you can see, it was $9.99 at Kmart, but I bought for $0.99 cents at Savers. I'm gonna need to buy more VHS towers soon. Um, and this one was recommended to me, and it is Return to Cabin by the Lake. And it doesn't come with artwork because it was a rental. Um, Caliph Super Video. Hmm. Not sure where this came from. I don't know, I always like to see where these rentals come from. It's pretty cool. It's like, how did this get from there to here? But, um, Return to Cabin by the Lake on VHS. Be kind, please rewind. And we had stopped randomly at this estate sale. 
I'm going to be jumping around in this video. We got stopped randomly at this estate sale and I found these. And I didn't see them initially at first, but upon a second look around, I found them and we got um, on VHS. Funhouse, the Toby Hooper flick. Uh, by enchantment video, it does not have any mold, which is a good thing, but more horror to add to my horror VHS collection. Um, I have this, but I can replace it with one I already have because one I have is like totally beaten. But we have a copy of Ghostbusters on VHS. I like it because it's like embossed. And what also is neat is that you do this. It opens like this. Not like a normal VHS um, box or case, whatever you want to call it. But it opens like that. And in this the, is the um, tape itself. And it's just cool. We got that. And it calls it back in. And you got that. These were 50 cents at that estate sale. And this, on um, this big box VHS we got, because I, I shot off the book, but we had this huge box of The Exorcist. I thought this was cool because it opens like that and you got this, like, this is cool. I mean, we don't get packaging like this nowadays. It kind of sucks, but I don't know. I'm just always fascinated how pack how movies like VHS tapes and DVDs have packaged you know pre blu-ray and pre 4k like I mean movie packaging today is kind of boring I know we have the cool stuff like arrow but I mean this isn't easily accept accessible to everybody and not everybody's gonna pray pay the price point for this sort of thing but you know just to see that like this is where like physical media packaging started like you know stuff like this is really rad like this is where it all began you gotta remember that like this sort of thing is where it all began cool stuff like this is what we you know what set the precedent for stuff like again stuff like this so yeah and, and then now we got these i found these i'm a puzzle person so i found this at um savers today goes with my shirt um, I found this cool puzzle, this Twilight puzzle. I mean, I gasped like a little girl when I saw it. I was so excited. Yes, I'm a Twilight fan. I've been a Twilight fan. Always been Team Edward till I die, basically. I mean, don't judge me. You, you like what you like. You listen to what you listen to. We're all different, and that's what makes the world go round. In life, way more interesting. But you know, we got this Twilight puzzle at five bucks. It's probably like twenty dollars on Amazon or something. But this is cool. And we got this one I was so excited for. And it was only a dollar at the thrift store. Um, it is this. Um, the Wizard of Oz Wicked Witch puzzle. I mean, how cool is this? I mean, it was only a dollar. But it's it's shaped like this. It's a shaped puzzle. So it looks just like this when you put it together. And what's cool is that it has these really rad, like, different shaped puzzle pieces. Which I'll show you in a second. Um, see how they're fitting in there, but like this is gonna be a fun interesting puzzle to put together And I think I'll probably start this soon But hold on and see if I can get this to open the box is on there pretty good Come on, come on It's 500 piece puzzle and y'all know that this is my girl So check this out, okay so check out these puzzle pieces. These are supposed to be the ruby slippers. And we got a hat. We got another ruby slipper. We got a flying monkey. That is so cool. Actually, we got several flying monkeys, but I don't think every single puzzle piece is shaped like this because it gives you, see like this is what the puzzle is supposed to be shaped like once you're done. But those are the pieces that go in her to make complete the puzzle that are shaped like that, that are odd. So I was really excited to find this. I like I squeaked like a little schoolgirl in the thrift store, but I just hope all 500 pieces are there so I can put this together. Uh, I'll probably put it up on my Instagram once it's done. We got that. And from Savers, as y'all know, for $2.99, for some reason, these dang dolls are expensive and there's a whole craze and a whole resurgence of them. But I found myself, she needs, 
she totally needs a wash and she totally needs a spa day but I got myself I mean with clothes accessories and all an Abby monster high doll she has her hair she has her outfit her earrings her bracelet I mean she has a bracelet and her earrings I was pretty impressed but most importantly she has her shoes she has her shoes and what I like is that um she's um glittery I don't know if you can tell but like she's all sparkly this whole doll is sparkly but yes so she's gonna get a whole spa I'm gonna wash her you know wash her clothes give her a, a, a nice little hair treatment oh this is good Ugh, she's all crusty she definitely needs a treatment but I'm gonna wash her up and add her to the collection I have over there Got that and then from Amazon yeah we'll do that one next Amazon I got this book I've seen it all over book talk um, and it is supposed to be a really really terrifying book so before I start any other book, um, the book I was currently reading, I'm going to stop and start this because like I said, it's more, it's more new. Um, and it's supposed to be terrifying and it's supposed to just leave you like totally messed up. So I'm excited for that. But let me read you the back. Nothing has been normal for Teddy. Not since discovering the harsh identity of the monster he had been living with his whole life, his own father. Teddy and his mother leave that behind to start over in a small Indiana township. But as Teddy begins to learn of humanity's monsters, he unveils an otherworldly evil he calls the Shadow. The Shadow tests Teddy's vulnerability and growing sense of isolation, poisoning his mind and conjuring a vile killer in the making. A year later, Officer Leonard Strode is called in to offer consultation on a case similar to the most brutal and scarring of those he's worked on before. One is the case of Jackie Warren, the other Theo Theodore Teddy Blackwood, two missing children. As he and two other officers follow the trail of clues, Strode is haunted by the ghosts of his own past and is horrified to find them wreaking havoc on his present. When both Teddy and Strode finally meet face to face, they must confront their inner darkness as well, or else be consumed by it. Um, let me just read you some of the things that they say in the back about this book. Um, a creepy, bloody, soaked capture of the lonely and poignant horrors of childhood. Take your turn, Teddy never lets up. Take your turn, Teddy offers a disturbing glimpse of how a broken spirit can unleash powerful demons of the soul. Absolutely captivating, I couldn't put down. A gripping and shocking tale that will suck you in and leave you gasping by the end. Terrifyingly terrific. Take Your Turn Teddy is a wonderful dark story with a vid vividly gripping tension. Newland's prose and storytelling takes you on a truly wild ride through a twisted narrative full of blood and everyday terrors that linger long after you finish the last page. So yeah, take your turn, Teddy. Um, like I said, this was all over book talk and just like people talking about it saying that they just, ru it ruined them. It's like genuinely horrifying. Um, I was really excited to get my hands on it and read it. So I'm probably going to start this relatively soon um, and see if it really is what they say. And then we got over here from Amazon. I had put this on my story and I finally got my hands on one. It took forever to get here, I guess, because it was so popular. So I don't know, we might be seeing myself. A little blinged out like Courtney Love in that video from Hole. So yeah, I finally got my hands on one. <laughs> this a blinger thing, you know, in there, make those jewels in your hair. It's got all of this a bling bling to it. Um, but I'm really excited to play with this because I used to have this when I was a teen. Well, maybe middle school, kind of high school, but um, I'm really excited to try this out. And last but certainly not least we got stuff i found today at barnes and noble um we got um because we all know that um arrow is 50 percent off um a childhood favorite of mine i quote this all the time and i'll just randomly say a line from this movie but um something i used to watch with my older sister quite a bit and i still own the dvd and i'm probably going to still keep the dvd because i've had it for so long like decades like maybe going on two decades now but um i got the blu-ray from arrow and it is 
My Stepmother is an Alien with Kim Basinger, Willow from Buffy, or soon to be Willow, and Dan Aykroyd. Um, I mean, it probably, I don't care. I was just really excited to have this on higher resolution. But as we all know, 50% off Arrow at Barnes & Noble, so I scooped that. And this book from one of my more modern favorite horror writers today, Grady Hendrix, I got We Sold Our Souls, a novel. Um, I picked this up because, you know, I just, I've been trying to read a lot more. So, and of course, it's gotta be the horror genre because it's just, it's just my staple. But on the back of this one, it is, I'll read you the, the, I can't even think, but let's just get into it. Every morning, Chris Polsky wakes up in hell. In the 1990s, she was lead, guitar, lead guitarist of Dirtwork, a heavy metal band on the brink of breakout success until lead singer Terry Hunt embarked on a solo career and rocketed to stardom, leaving his bandmates to rot in obscurity. Now Chris works as a night manager of a Best Western. She's tired, broke, and unhappy. Then one day everything changes. A shocking act of violence turns her life upside down as she begins to suspect that Terry sabotaged more than just the band. Chris hits the road hoping to reunite dirt work and confront the man who ruined her life. Her journey will take her from the Pennsylvania Rust Belt to a celebrity rehab center to a satanic music festival. A furious power ballad about never giving up, We Sold Our Souls is an epic journey into the heart of a conspiracy-crazed, pill-popping, paranoid country that seems to have lost its very soul by Grady Hendrix. I have a few other books by him, um, but yeah, he's one of my more favorite like horror authors to date. Like It's more current and currently writing, but this is one of his books that I wanted. There's a few other ones like The Final Girls Club. Um, Southern Southerner's Guide to Vampire Hunting. I think it's what that's what it's called. Um, bookstore. Um, there's another one. It's, that's that's new. Uh, I I have his um, other book called My Best Friend's Exorcism. Um, but you know, like I said, he's one of my more favorite modern horror writers. So I got that at Barnes and Noble. Um, but that is it for this haul. Um, thank you for watching. Let me know what you I picked up that was your favorite. Um, 